Yes. Welcome to Up In Your Business with Kerry McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Through storytelling and conversational interviews, this weekly radio show offers listeners first-hand insight in starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk-taking, and the commonalities of successful people. Connect with Carrie through her candid, often funny, and informative weekly blog, where you'll read and comment on life as wife, mother, daughter, and entrepreneur. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. I'm Carrie McCoy, and it's time for me to get up in your business. Before we start, I want to introduce you to the people at the table. We have Tim Bowen, our technician, who will be taking your calls and pushing the buttons. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. And recording our show to make a podcast available next week is our technician, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. No problem. This show, Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, began with Entrepreneurs in Mind, a platform for me and, a, and my guests to pay forward our business knowledge in a conversational way. What I enjoy most, that I didn't realize I was going to enjoy most, was hearing my guests' biography and hearing how they maneuvered the path of leadership and entrepreneurship in pursuit of their dreams. My guest today is executive chef Donnie Furneaux. And what a path this guy has traversed. Donnie is no slouch. Like most successful people, he is a hard worker. I hope through our conversation today, you will learn something, want to get involved, or be inspired to take action in your own life. If you don't already know me, you may be wondering and asking yourself, what's this lady's story? Well, Tim is here to tell you. Thank you, Carrie. Over 40 years ago, with only $400, Carrie McCoy founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, this business has grown and changed dramatically, from door-to-door sales, to telemarketing, to mail order and catalog sales, and now Flag and Banner relies heavily on the internet, including our newest feature, live chatting. Each decade required a sales strategy and procedure change. Her business and leadership knowledge grew with time and experience, as well as the confidence to branch out into multimedia marketing that began with our nonprofit Dreamland Ballroom, as well as our in-house publication, Brave Magazine, and now this very radio show you're listening to. Each week on this show, you'll hear candid conversations between her and our guests about real world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that we hope you'll find interesting. Carrie says that many business rules like treat your employees well, know your profit margin, and have a succession plan can be applied across most industries. What I find encouraging is her example that hard work pays off. Did you know that for nine years while starting Flag and Banner, she supplemented her income with many part-time jobs? And that just shows that her persistence, perseverance, and patience prevailed. Today, Flag and Banner has 10 departments, and I have 25 coworkers. It reminds us all that small businesses are the fuel of our country's economic engine and that they empower people's lives. If you would like to ask Carrie a question or share your story or your experience, you can send an email to questions at upyourbusiness.org. Thank you, Tim. My guest today in Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy show is the critically acclaimed award-winning and nationally recognized executive chef, Donnie Furneaux. After high school, Donnie attended Kirkwood Culinary Academy in Iowa and apprenticed under, you're going to me, have to help me with his name, Felipe. <laughs> Philippe Forcioli. There you go. I guess y'all are both French. Furneaux and Forcioli. The former executive chef of the Orient Express. Are we talking about the Orient Express train that the Agatha Christie book is written after? Yes. Yeah, it is. James Bond, all of them. <laughs> wow. We're going to have to learn a little bit about that when, once we get into the nut and bolts of the show today. Chef Furneaux is an entrepreneur extraordinaire, having spearheaded the opening of countless restaurants in the greater Little Rock, Arkansas area, founding his own signature blends of Furneaux spices, and starring in two Food Network reality TV shows, the BBQ Blitz in 2015 and the Great Food Truck Race in 2017. Donnie has had the pleasure of cooking for some of America's most influential politicians and celebrities, including... 
President Bill Clinton, Senator Ted Kennedy, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, and Mayors Giuliani and Bloomberg, among many others. He has been featured in numerous national cookbooks and publications such as The Wine Specter magazine. Donnie's heart is big as he lends his talent and time to mostly children's charities. In the No Kid Hungry campaign, he marched on Capitol Hill to fight for breakfast in the classrooms in Arkansas. He rode in a 300-mile bike ride to help raise money for hungry children across America and was the guest chef for Eva Longoria's Celebrity Gala and Poker Tournament, benefiting children and young adults with mental disability. More recently, Donnie worked with Memory Care America, helping to discover and utilize foods as medicine for Alzheimer patients. I am so excited to welcome to the table the big-hearted culinary wizard and chef, Donnie Furneaux. Wow. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> I did my research, didn't I? You did. You did. You didn't know you were so great. I'm not that old. I haven't been around that long. <laughs> ah, don't be lying. What a career and exciting life you've lived. Are you afraid of anything? <laughs> I'm serious. Are you really afraid of anything? Um, snakes. <laughs> but when it comes to um, going out and trying, just give it a world see what happens you are not risk averse that's for sure yeah what was it I, I think when i graduated high school our motto was um those who can find out how far one can go i need to rethink this <laughs> i should know what it is um i'm just impressed that you know what your high school yeah, it was motto like those, is at all or even trying those ha those who risk how far one can go can find out how far one can go. Only those who risk going too far can find out how far one can go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> well, you have definitely lived up to that. There's one thing I didn't mention in the opening. You're an avid marksman, aren't you? <laughs> Shooting and stuff? Yeah. You, you, <laughs> I do like to shoot guns every once in a while. I know, but I think that is so interesting. <laughs> he is such a, uh, I, I mean, a, a sensitive, creative guy who, really likes the macho stuff <laughs> i don't really go around bragging about it but i do like um i do like the outdoors i enjoy it and i bet if you weren't a chef you'd be a policeman <laughs> probably i do i do enjoy actually um in between restaurant gigs i was going to apply for the rock fire department but found out i was too old the cutoff was 35. Really? Yeah. I knew I could pass all of it i just thought it'd be fun to be a fireman i, I really respect people that serve and uh, I just thought it'd be fun yeah. cooking the firehouse. I bet a lot of people, people don't know that about you. Um, you're probably right. A well, lot of people do now. <laughs> so uh, when did you know you had a knack for creating great food? Back when I was, uh, I was probably about 18. Um, but it, it goes beyond that. My aunt Doris kind of raised my brother and I. My father was a railroader, and uh, he got transferred to Iowa when I was, gosh, I was probably seven or eight. And we couldn't afford to, to move because we couldn't sell our house. And it took about seven years to sell it. And my mom worked nights and so my Aunt Doris would raise us, but she was a horrible cook. And so I started cooking for my brother and I. And then as I got older and I found jobs, I just excelled really quickly in the kitchen. And I like to go, uh, I like to go see concerts and travel and have fun when I was young. So I'd work in restaurants and I'd ask if I could have a couple weeks off. And if they said no, I'd quit and then come back and work at another restaurant. I just excelled at it. And I found it very interesting. And I would, as I kind of grew out of that path, I would start working under chefs that would teach me. And then once I was done learning or I, I wanted to be inspired by something else, I would, I would find a different restaurant. I don't recommend that now because job jumping with social media, people keep track of that these days. So. You are easily bored. Um, I can be, yeah. I can be, but um, right now with what I'm doing, my passion is definitely driving me. I, I, I wouldn't say easily bored. I just want to experience as much as I can, uh, if that kind of makes sense. That's not really boredom. It's really not. Um, but a restaurant business is a great place if you do want to jump around because your your uh, training can, is transferable from place to place. Absolutely, absolutely. And working with different chefs and working with different um, business-minded people, you kind of really get to pick and pull what you've experienced from each person. And I kind of think that's what's... Who's most inspired you? Oh, that's is, it the, is, it the, is it Felipe that we talked about in the introduction from the Orient Express? That's just a tough question. Culinary-wise, uh, Chef Philippe has inspired me, but... Um, 
my hard work and the hard work and determination my parents have always raised me um, with has really been kind of the backbone. And then creative wise, I, I think it would probably be Philippe or just going outside and and the outdoors and and loving good good food and eating out and traveling. Yeah. You've cooked all kinds of food. <laughs> I finally figured out now what I want to do. <laughs> I heard you have the. <laughs> we're going to talk about your new restaurant, what you're going to cook there. But you, I've heard you make the best fried chicken in in town, and it's healthy fried chicken. D don't tell anybody that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been gluten free for years, and so how the fried chicken recipe even came about was a funny story. We had the restaurant for no, and when I first moved here, you know, as a chef, you go through very many stages, and and I'll. You know, I'm I'm 42 now, so there. Oh, there it he is. finally told us. But um, in my 20s, and when you become a chef and you start being patted on the back a bunch, your your ego gets real big, and you want to start cooking for yourself and creating beautiful dishes and doing very fine dining things. And when I moved here to our, to Little Rock, it was just a different pace, and it really taught me. Trust me, I had an ego for many years. I still do, but when it came to fine dining, I really wanted to cook great things that nobody's experienced here in Arkansas. Well, they weren't ready for that. And so when I was putting out these beautiful menu menus, I was getting like, um, you know, uni and, and different types of, of What's fish. Uni? Sea urchin. Oh. There you go. Well, even, um, See, I don't even know what that is. But like the fried chicken, I put it on the menu because one time I ordered, I had a menu and I put it out, brand new menu, and nobody ordered anything. They just had steaks and there was all this beautiful seafood on there. So I'm like, you know what? People want to eat fried chicken for lunch and eat it for dinner, but they want to dress nice doing it. I was very angry when I did it. And this was like 10 years ago. And I put it on the menu and guess what? It was our number one seller. And over the years, I've just, I fell in love with it too. And it was just kind of like, the reason I'm telling you this is kind of, you know, you come from a bigger city, you've got the white coat, you're doing all those great things, but then you come and you realize where you want to be. And I'm, I love the South, I love Little Rock. But I'm right now just kind of cooking for what people want. And the fried chicken, it was my first stab at it. And uh, I just, I love fried chicken. And so I did the recipe that kind of felt right. And it, it doesn't have any flour in it. It has no flour. It's cornmeal. Fried chicken with, oh. So whenever you think of things fried, my favorite thing with like, uh, say, pizza. You can have a great pizza, but a really good test of good pizza is if, how is it cold? And just like fried chicken, I love fried chicken, but I love cold fried chicken more than anything. And if you have good cold fried chicken, it has to be crispy. Well, how do you achieve that? Because flour gets gummy. Cornmeal. And how I figured it out was I was going to catfish restaurants, never had real fried catfish until I moved to the South. Their catfish is crispy. How come their chicken is? Well, I'm just going to fry it like the catfish. It was not rocket science. And it, it works, but it all has to do with how you season it, too. Oh, well, right. sure. With Donnie for no, with for no spices. A little bit. Um, that's what makes you, separates you from everybody else that can cook, is you're creative. Well, it, there that's has a to, talent. That's a gift. Thank you. I, I just, I feel like I just kind of pay attention and observe. And, you know, when I, the friends I make, I listen to, to what they want. And I pay attention to what people are cooking. Well, I'm glad you got over your ego and you start cooking what people <laughs> want instead of what Donnie wants to cook. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as a chef, that's a big uh, that's a big one to admit. You know, uh, you know, I would imagine all chefs need to have a big ego because you put yourself out there every time you cook something. Well, it, it's it, what's what's hard about being a chef is you're literally only as good as your last meal, and every time you put yourself out there, you're ready for ridicule. And um, what's crazy is I love being here on the radio show. The Food Network experience was great and all that. But when I became a chef and when I, this whole inspiration hit me, you weren't, we weren't celebrities. We weren't treated like royalty. We, nobody gave a shit if we were going to go from job to job. But now it's like, you know, it's so hard because if you close a restaurant or you do something unsuccessfully, like you're written about in all the par in, in all the papers and we don't save lives. You know, our jobs really don't matter that much, but it's more of a celebrity thing. And so looking at that moving now, it is great. It's a great tool for marketing. It's a great tool for your business. But if you're not a people person, this is the wrong industry. Um, but you are a people person. I, I, I've, I have been. It's, it's a lot of my mom and me but um, and my dad. But, you know, like I said, back when I started doing this, you know, Philippe was a celebrity just because of all that he did. But I never thought I would be, you know, sitting here with did you. Did you work with him on the Oregon Express? No, he, he, he'd already been, he'd there. already been there. And so he opened up a restaurant in Rockford and, um, it was a pretty big brigade of chefs and, uh, I was very successful with him. 
So. That's awesome. I think this is a great take place to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Chef Donnie Furneaux. We'll hear about some of the celebrities he has cooked for, get the scoop on being a Food Network reality TV star, and the application process. Some of you might want to know that. Find out about Donnie's newest venture. He's about to open yet another restaurant in Little Rock, Arkansas, and where you can buy the Donnie Furneaux signature spices, Furneaux spices, and how to use them. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. If you miss any part of this show, a podcast will be made available next week at flagandbanner.com's website. If you prefer to listen on iTunes, YouTube, or SoundCloud, you'll find those links there as well. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy. I'm speaking today with Chef Donnie Furneaux, the tireless, big-hearted, gun-toting, culinary genius, and reality TV star of the Food Network. <laughs> That's a first. I know, right? <laughs> I loved writing that. You were on the barbecue in 2015. You were on the BBQ Blitz. You were on something else, you said. I was on Cooking Channel. I, I judged a barbecue show. Oh. Um, gosh, what was the name of it? <laughs> oh, Big Bad Barbecue Brawl. Oh, okay. And so I secretly had a love for barbecue, and I just haven't really... It was kind of, The cat was getting out of the bag at that point. Oh, okay, good. Uh, in 2017, just last year, you did the Great Food Truck Race, and you were the Southern Frenchie Truck, which I watched... Arwen watched. We all loved it. Um, I personally really thought you should have won. We did too. <laughs> we actually got second place in sales that day that we got cut in uh, oh, really? Nashville. Yeah, but because of the challenges and everything, we, we got squeezed out. And that was a tough one. And with my wife doing marketing, she, lost, she was like, are you kidding me? We got second in sales. It's all about marketing. How can you win last in sales and still win immunity? So tell the radio listeners that you are married to megan Me she yeah was, megan for now yeah she was she was on there with you she, yeah she's a little blonde that, squeaky uh, little cute blonde gorgeous and she has a job in marketing and she's, thought she did a great job she does pr yeah she does pr and her um agency was kind enough to let her leave with me for you know x amount of weeks and that was a big ask right there too so mm -hmm. so is she responsible for getting you on that show no, actually, I've done some TV stuff in the past, and I, I can't really name some of the shows I've worked with just because I just can't. That's so, the rules. Well, some of them, and so is it because they haven't aired yet? No, it's just I don't want to get into it okay. really. Right. And so we, we've gotten pretty close, and, and there was one show that I got on there, and we were the final cut. Like I was right there, but I, I didn't want to play the character because even though it is about cooking, it's still they're casting a character. Absolutely. And so there was just this, an area I wouldn't play because this is a small town. It's Little Rock, and I didn't want to be a, a villain, <laughs> if you will. And so um, this one, I was actually at the gym, and I was working out, and I got a message from Food Network on my Facebook page, and they asked if we wanted to do the food, great food truck race. I'm like, man, I don't want to do a food truck. Like, it, it just doesn't sound right. Then they said we could win $50,000. I'm like, I guess I'm doing a food truck. Let's do this. <laughs> and then um, they interviewed me uh, and my wife uh, for quite a while, and then um, we – weren't sure we were on the show and then our original partner backed out uh a week and a half out two weeks out and then we put a you know then, then we were able to, to make a, a quick adjustment and we were able to get on the show and we had a great time and and i've i've lifelong memory it was a great time so it took you 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 go down and you audition we did not no you don't okay so most people do so there there are casting most calls most of the time most most of the time there are casting calls this one was kind of it was unique they kind of they kind of um, knew who they wanted and they went out and saw, saw well people. it's you gotta understand like it's not um it, when you're watching a show it looks great but you still have to be gone for like five to six weeks and that was you, my next question how long are you gone it, it we were gone about five weeks and you have to about four weeks i think it was but you have to um you can't tell anybody what you're up to so yeah and this last one, I you know I did the No Kid Hungry bicycle ride for 300 miles through California. We did 100 miles a day for three days, and then we were going to do the show, and we were supposed to leave in in March, and then it was postponed. And I was thinking, well, we're not going to do the show now. And literally the week, the day I was supposed to leave for California to go to the bike ride, we had to leave um, for New Orleans to go film the show. And 
then I had to call the people in California and be like, listen, I can't ride my bike this far. I know we raised the money, but I can't tell you where I'm going either. <laughs> we oh, were, they are just mad at you probably. Well, no, they, they were they were cool. They were cool. We're gonna um I'm I'm planning on riding again here in the near future. Um but I'm still, you know, still with that charity and so they weren't too upset. We oh, still yeah. raised some money. You are but, a volunteer, they can't get too mad at you. Yeah, and, and so um but the show was a great experience. It was a great experience for all of us on board. We we all learned a lot about each other and hopefully um And you're still married? I'm still married. That. Actually, we were only married for six months before we were crammed on that food truck and, and high stress situations, and, and, and we came out stronger. So, that's nice. <laughs> could have gone one of two ways. Yeah, that's really nice. So, it, what was it like when you got voted off? Um, it, it was hard. I mean, all three of us were really disappointed because every single one of us put our heart and soul into it. And, you know, I even think all three of us came together a little bit more personally, and we were really able to figure each other out. Um, and and so when it happened, we were all like, "Man, this is rigged. This is bad, blah blah." But then we thought about it. It's like, you know what, guys? We just got to see the whole South on somebody else's dime, and we got to, to do a great experience, and it was a lot of fun. But but one of my biggest concerns was, as a chef, you know, building the whole way up. I never wanted to be categorized as a, a reality chef, or you, you know what I mean. Like I didn't want to be. I don't want to say that I never categorized as like a a food truck TV. Chef, I wanted it to be known for the others, but I like all of it kind of being combined in one. It's a lot of experiences, but what I really take away from that experience that we had, I got to eat some of the hottest food in the South. I and, saw that. Yeah, and, and and travel around, and we really, you know, with opening this new restaurant, we got to do marketing research on Food Network style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, did you get any, did they pay you at all? Because so you're off of work, did you make Oh, yeah, any, we, yeah, we, we got you, money. You got money? While you were there, they, so you were like a paid. Uh, yeah, we, we, actor. We, we, we had our food and everything taken care of, and 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 we got paid. You know, a, a little, little bit. compensation. I saw that where you ate some of the, food, the hottest food in the South. Oh, the the, the what is it? Um, yeah, four hundred and ten well, degrees or whatever, whatever it was. The four hundred degree hot chicken. Why would anybody even want to do that? You can't even taste the flavor of the food. It was delicious, and believe it or not, my wife loved it, and you she loved. Kidding. No, I was like, you're crazy, woman. But um, Nashville hot chicken, like I know it's a cool trend out there, and. There's some really good hot chicken in the city, but we actually tried a lot of Nashville hot chicken in Nashville, and it's delicious. So if you see it on a menu somewhere at one of these local restaurants, I think there's one just right down the street here that has it on their menu, too. It's good. Check there's one out. here in Little Rock? Uh, just there's restaurants that have it on their menu. Really? Yeah, I've seen it around. It's, it's good stuff. I would be afraid to eat that because it seems like it would ruin your palate for tasting anything else. Kind of like tequila, right? Mm -hmm. I like tequila and hot stuff. And you so. try the bar and you do them both. So there you go. They go great together. So you're not thinking about doing any more shows because, like you said, you didn't want to be known as the reality TV star chef. Well, right. And and with that, well, it's not only that, but it's kind of like you work your whole life as a career and you do one thing. You don't want to be just be known as the he does the the, the food truck race. You know, it's mm -hmm. a great thing to be known as. But I've also done a lot of great charity work. I've done restaurants. I cook fine dining. I can do catering. I do other things out there. Let's talk about your restaurants. You opened up for no restaurant, which you talked about right before the break, and how you wanted to do fine dining and. Oh, we we had so much fun there. I mean, at the time when we opened for no, um, my business partners and I, it was just the right fit, and I feel like we sold at the right time too. Um, and that was a we success, successfully sold it. And how long were you in business? Um, a little over seven years, and so. Oh my goodness! And I'll tell you, like uh, looking at real estate when we put that restaurant in Hillcrest in 2004 there was a lot of real estate open there was you could park on the streets it wasn't a bustling area it's just like, kind of like the south main district we've watched it grow and we were looking at real estate for putting the new restaurant in Cathead's Diner into Hillcrest briefly but we didn't because you can't get any real estate there it's a beautiful neighborhood we live I actually live in Hillcrest and it's just really cool seeing that neighborhood just up and bustling but um you know Fernot was a great fit at the time but I'd that style of restaurant for us just isn't you opened and next you do you went to north little rock and you opened up good food and i really miss your good food to goes that was good but we you know that was something again coming back to what i'm doing now i'm listening to what people want that was again me cooking what i felt people needed just because of obesity diabetes um, cancers alzheimer's all the different reasons for medical i really wanted to help change my community with healthy food, but make it taste like comfort food. So like fried chicken, all those things, but using great ingredients. And I lost my ass. So don't ever, 
<laughs> there you go again. Make it cooking for yourself, yeah. and it wasn't what the people wanted. It wasn't but, for the you people. don't think it was the location? I think a lot. There was a lot of factors that that played in. I don't think it's any one. I think a lo- I, I honestly think a lot of it was me trying to push something on people that they didn't that w- they weren't ready for. I Maybe I would drive of over there just to get that healthy food because it's so hard to find healthy food to eat that you can eat out fast food. You can take it to go or grab it at lunch. It's just like any experience you have in life. Like if you're with a bunch of your friends and you guys all think it's a great idea, maybe it isn't the best idea. Maybe you should talk to a few more people that aren't your friends. And find out, but but the people I surrounded myself with at that time was very healthy, and you know I was huge, very inspired by my parents and just saving people with food because at the end of the day, why we feel the way we do it's because what we put in our body at all time. And I can get really weird and long winded about this stuff, so I'll keep it short. But um, that was something; it was an experience. And so, but what I think that it happened, and you being a business owner. Um, it really got me ready for the next venture because I know what it's like to be successful and I know what it's like to be not successful. And, you know, when you, when you have a restaurant or you have a business that's bringing in money, you, you can make those mistakes because there's money that'll be in the bank account again next week and you can just tighten the screws. But when you literally are having a failing business or one that doesn't have the sales, any mistake you make can be catastrophic. And um, we were at the point towards the end where it was either pay my employees tax or rent and I'm going to go for my employees every time, you know, and we finally just had to wrap it up and close it up. And, you know, at the time I was sad, but now I sit back and I look on it and wow, what a, what a learning experience that was for me. Well, Um, I saw your food, good food at hospitals in the cafeterias. But, uh, you know, and, and that was really cool. But what was unfortunate there is even the people that worked in those hospitals that should be eating it because they're around it. They just wanted fried catfish and hamburgers. You can't change what people, yeah. And so that's a whole different issue. But for me, I really, because I, you know, I did the marketing research. I, but I was doing research in places like Dallas, New York, um, and seeing people have healthy restaurants on lines. I thought, oh my God, this is the future. And it is everywhere else. And I'm not saying Arkansas is bad, but like, hey, I'm in the South too. I'm not going anywhere. I love it here, but we know what we want. And if you, with any business, if you want to make, money or be successful at it you have to be paying attention to what your consumers are wanting mm-hmm. do you use your own money to open up good food or um, did you have partners we had partners we had partners and so do you think so, it was mismanagement or do you just think it do you think that played I, I, into it i think yeah i think i mean just like i said a lot of factors going into it i can go back and look and and i mean every single area could have been um done a little bit better even on my own end i mean it wasn't just you know everybody else's fault like i i i bit off more than i could chew so what'd you time. do after that so you closed down good food right and then um but i guess that's when you started spices right no i've been in the spices now for years so the spice company started years ago my brother mike and i started this business um for my and my, and my dad sells it my parents have the business now but um it's good supplemental income for my dad mom and and people use them but we use that same spice in the restaurant. So back in the Chalbachi days when I was a young chef, um, I had chefs that wouldn't listen to me because they were older than I was and they knew more than me, of course. And so I would do these great dishes. And then when I had a night off and you were a customer, you could tell if I wasn't in the kitchen. Because the spice. Because it was the seasoning was off. So I got so upset one day, I walked in there and got rid of every spice except for warm flavors like cinnamon and you know cardamom and, and stuff that would normally not go on a steak or, or something like that and made one big seasoning. And then of course it's had different um, different variations of the years it's been refined but it literally can go on everything because if you go to a restaurant and you have a steak on your birthday and you go there every year on your birthday you want that same damn steak you don't want somebody else's version of what chef Renault or whoever's cooking that steak is you you want what you had last time and consistency is key with any business wouldn't, mm-hmm. wouldn't you agree mm-hmm. um, Absolutely. and so what that was it just created consistency and so and the spice is um the spice business has been good for my parents and, and we all you know we all kind of benefit from it i use it you know, I buy for my parents and it <laughs> works. But then after we did good food, um, uh, I, I went over to the, I helped um, open up the 1836 club, the, the private club on Cantrell. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, I had left there in May. And when I left there, I went to go do the Food Network thing. And during that time, um, my business partner and I were negotiating, we're, we're just talking about doing a cool concept of a restaurant. And, and here we are now. And we're about so, to open up another one. We're about to open it up. And this one, I feel of all the 
of all the things I've done and all the restaurants, all the chefs I've worked for, everything, all the people I've met, the place I've lived, this is kind of like what I'm meant to do. Like this food, the, the cuisine, the restaurant that we're doing now, I, I feel like all of it's led up to I, now. I, I love being 40 years old. It's like you have all this wisdom. You still have lots of energy. And you have all this wisdom from all the things you've done. It kind of all starts to come together. It does. And, and do you remember back in like your early 30s? I mean, I, I remember being so frustrated at 29 because I'd got all these national accolades as a chef. But nobody would take me seriously because I was 29. And now I've got some gray hair and I've got a four in front of my age and people are like, whoa, he might know what he's talking about. There's so much truth to that. And, and it's unfortunate for some of the younger, you know, the trailblazers out there. But my advice to them is just keep trailblazing, keep your head down, work hard. And when you get old enough or when you lift it up, people will talk about you. If you're too busy banging your own tambourine around and you can't, you don't have the power to back it up, you're just going to, you're just going to fail, you know? So after you shut down uh, Good Foods, there was a period before you went to work at the 1836 club i went right into it oh you did uh-huh. i went right into it i mean it was like so we- your wife didn't marry a failing a flailing <laughs> not a failing a flailing restaurateur because you already went right from one one career into another career what, what was cool about it though and you got to understand like little rock and i can talk about it now but like we were losing our ass over that good food but with the media it goes back to how as a chef you're in the limelight they can write about anything they want. And overnight, I was able to thread the needle to make it look like I'm leaving good food to open the 1836 club, when really we were getting evicted and we were closing down the doors and couldn't afford anything, but my, my employees were paid. And you know we were losing five, 6,000 a month. And the media, we were able to just like, boom, boom, boom. And it was, the deal was done like, so and fast. It's so fast, but I mean, nobody around us knew, and I can talk about it now because it's it's all put to bed. But I remember coming home that night, and it's like, "Baby, we did it." She goes, "What are you talking about?" It's like the newspaper's going to read different the next few days. I promise. <laughs> it's like not that good food closed and we lost our butts, but we're closing that down to we were able to put a band aid on what the reality was, and so the career was still able to stay move forward. But then I go back and I look at it, and you know, wow, what a what a learning. Um, moment Humility. I had. Humility. It really was. Great teacher. It, it really was. And so, you know, with my friends, I'll talk shit. But publicly, if you look at my Facebook and my social media, I'm trying to be uplifting and I try to put a positive image out there. But we all have our. So uh, I can see you loving to open up restaurants. It just seems like it would be such a great creative outlet for you to design the kitchen, design the menu put it together did you love opening 1836 you're like oh this is what I, my favorite thing to do it, it, that one was very challenging for me but it, it, it was fun um you know i learned a lot about different people's personalities and, and just different types but we were very lucky going into it all the people involved because it was just what was the packet house and they closed and they had like this gorgeous kitchen and everything was pretty much done and it was, oh, it was still there just ready to go it's i mean that kitchen is I think you could cook for I think you could cook for a thousand people out of that kitchen. Like it is the most beautiful. What's the most you can really cook for a size crowd? You can really cook for uh, um, well. I mean, over two hundred gets gets the, to be the, that two, I've done. Or, or no, not that you've done, but you think that is the limit you should do if you want to have, serve a good meal. What would you say is the limit that you could really serve amount of people and serve it well? <laughs> Anybody, not just you, any chef. It depends on how big your staff is and how trained they are. It depends on how well the, your employees, how, how thin are you going to spread yourself? And so if you're going to do a party for 500, you better have a staff that you guys have been trained to do parties for 500. If you're a small restaurant that normally does 50 people a night and you're going to do a party for 500, you might not want to try that do a little bit smaller but like 100 people to 200 but like right now i'll do some catering and i'll do anything from 100 to 200 people i I prefer smaller parties but um i think one of the biggest challenges it was really cool you you said that we we cooked for some celebrities but um we had just opened for no and the slate 60 was coming to town and that was president clinton the top 60 philanthropists in the country at the clinton center what would you call them um it was called the slate 60 was the name was the name of the event and it was um i think cnn and news newsweek through it but um it was a great experience because we did five courses with 180 people 
and two of the courses had options with different wine pairings. And from the time we dropped the first plate to the last plate, it was just under 90 minutes. Wow. Think about that. And then not only the first time we did it, and I, I lied my ass off. I told the person, yeah, we do this all the time. Never did it. Um, but I had a great staff, and I believed in them. And the team that I had that did it, I mean, you know, they all know who they are. It's the old Fernow team. And they were so good that we not only did we successfully do that event, but they went ahead and hired us immediately for the next year. And it was, I think it was 06 and 07. And where, it, where was the event? The Clinton Library. And that's where, like, Ted Kennedy, Warren Buffett. But, like, it was really cool to see all of those people there. Um, but what it did for us as a team, it made us all stronger. And we really learned our limitations without losing it, without, without um, hurting our, our careers, I guess you could say. Because when you're on that stage and you, uh, you don't perform well, <laughs> shit can go in a handbasket real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it can. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Chef Donnie Furneaux. We'll hear some more celebrity stories, maybe. Uh, I definitely want to get to talking about his new restaurant, the Cat Heads Diner, where he says he's putting it all together and making his favorite restaurant maybe so far. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. If you miss any part of this show, a podcast will be made available next week at flagandbanner.com's website. If you prefer to listen on iTunes, YouTube, or SoundCloud, we'll have those links there as well. All right. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy. I'm speaking today with Arkansas's renowned executive chef and entrepreneur, Donnie Furneaux. You're opening your own restaurant soon. Yes, we are. I've, I've just got to tell the listeners I'm not going to go into details about how, what a roller coaster owning your own business is and how you're, it's either feast or famine all the time and that you really do ha need to have nerves of steel to do it. And uh, you're doing it again. You're opening up Cat Heads Diner with Kelly Marks. And Kelly Marks, yeah. Kelly Marks is incredible. Um, like I said, you know, you, you look at life and if you just sit back, keep your head down and work hard and, and you're patient, um, things will happen. And you know, there were different ideas in the beginning on which direction we were going to go, who we were going to work with and all that. And Kelly and I, we were both at the same parts in our career. She had just closed down Sweet Love and was doing some work. And work. What is Sweet Love? Sweet Love Bakery. Oh, my God. If you guys oh, don't know, bakery. if you don't know Sweet Love Bakery, you should look on Instagram like Sweet Love Bakery. But she Bakes. said she closed it. She did. She did. Well, then I'm not wanting to look on Instagram. Like, oh, her. It's going to make my mouth water and I'm going to be frustrated. <laughs> She's still accessible, but... um. What's great, and you talked about how I love opening restaurants. This is where I am. This will be the last concept I really want to open. This is like oh, whatever. <laughs> Did y'all hear that BS? This is you're just so. I'm glad you believe your own BS. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it, you know this one has to be successful. Like this is if you look at Little Rock, if you look at my history, it kind of shows I've jumped around quite a bit. I mean, if you look at it, if you're in the limelight, if you're written about, wow, he jumps around a lot. But people don't see, okay, wow, he lost his butt here, so he went and did this and did this and did this. And so this one, like, I really love Arkansas. I love Little Rock. I mean, you can live anywhere else, but 20 minutes from now, we can be out hiking somewhere, fishing, doing whatever you want. You live in a big city, and, I mean, it, it, it takes hours. And, you know, I, I'm here because of family, and now I've got a ton of friends. I've got my roots are here. And, no, this is this is something that I've got to – this one has to work. This one has to What's stick. What's with the name? Cat Heads Diner. So we, we have that another – That kind of makes me not want to eat there, actually. <laughs> We've heard that. We're going to have couple. Cat Head for, in our soup. Well, if you – and I had to learn about it, too. We have a, we have another partner, um, our investor, and he's he's born and bred here. And uh, Cat Heads is a cat head biscuit. And what a cat head oh. biscuit is, it's a biscuit the size of a cat's head. And at first I wasn't sure – uh, you know, and look, I, people in the room knew that. Well, <laughs> I can't believe it. Somebody in the room knew that. Okay, cat head biscuits, the size of a biscuit, must the be size, big. the size of a cat's head. But but it's something that's nichey. Like you won't forget it, will you? No, no, you won't. And and we came up with a bunch of different names, and they kind of all run together. And at first, you know, it, it just took a second to sink in. And now that we've got the the design done. The logo, just the concept. I just love it. It all makes sense. I, I think it's great. Can we go see the logo anywhere? You got um, a website yeah, yeah, up yeah, yet? Yeah, so you can follow us on Cat Heads Diner on Instagram, and it's Cat Heads uh, Diner. And it's all one word. Uh, uh, Cat it? Heads is one word. Yeah. And then it's Diner. It's not Cat Head. Make sure the S is at the end. And it's on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, we are looking to open up uh, spring of, of 2018. 
construction's taken a little bit longer than we thought it. Uh, I thought you th- bought we an thought. old building. We, we didn't buy it. We're renting. I or I moved into an old building. We did. So we, we moved into uh, the old Sterling Paint Building, and Cromwell is moving their employees over there. We're going to have about 13 or 14 nice apartments, studio apartments that overlook the city on Well, you got customers instantly then. We hope so. If we, if, How many's in the Cromwell firm? Um, I think there's about 100 to 120 employees Excellent. there. Excellent. But that area, you know, there's a lot of there's a huge cycling community over there. Um, there's you know, you've got Lost Forty and Rebel Kettle, so there's already some established um, businesses there. Um, but you've got a whole network of of hard laborers. You know, you've got the mm-hmm. steel mill, you've got Port Authority where my brother Jeff works, you've got the airport, you've got Tac Air, you got you got a there's a lot of business out there. Well, Heifer International's right there. Oh my god, yeah, I didn't even get to that. But Clinton you know, Library. Clinton Who Library. Who would have ever Heifer? thought that area of town was going to be turn around and be so fun but even the axion building i mean in, oh yeah if you pay attention to that you see where, where that's going um so you've got a lot of clientele in the area we, to we do from. and we're gonna have a lot of excitement but with any business you're gonna open up and you're gonna beat that drum and everybody's gonna look at you it's it's our jobs at this point to not piss anybody off once we get them in the door can you do that donnie really can you do that <laughs> he's, he's, he's like i'm gonna cook this and you're gonna eat it no well it's just like any restaurant you know and and the one thing that's great is this city supports their own and they support local businesses um but what's hard as a business owner is being prepared for that initial rush and how do you maneuver it how do you do it correctly do you listen to them during the honeymoon and add on and build more or do you just ride it out and just do it but but, which one well what we're going to do is we're going to go in with our best game plan we're going to work our butts off we're going to perfect these recipes and make this we're really listening to what arkansas wants and we're going we're gonna to give it our, be- our best effort, and we're going to train our staff, and we're going to make sure everybody's there. Now, we know there's going to be the floodgates are going to open when we're... What's the food? So what we call the food, um, somebody said it was ambiguous because uh, they weren't sure what it was. But when I say Southern Comfort Food, I know exactly what that I is. I know what that is. If you go to Grandma's house, that's what she's going to cook. Yeah. Well, we got um, your fried chicken. Fried. So the concept really <laughs> um, is we're, we're focusing on breakfast, brunch, lunch, and some some dinner and catering but it's um biscuits barbecue fried chicken donuts and pies with like a meat and three sides for lunch blue plate specials like yes <laughs> that's it. those are all my favorite foods donuts fried chicken barbecue and pies i don't even like cakes though you literally named my favorite foods well they're, they're all of ours and so there's a struggle because i do live a healthy lifestyle but i'm already told myself like i'm gonna Put on 15 pounds and just hold it there. I don't trust a chef who's not fat. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> hey, you trust me. Well, that's true. I do. <laughs> and you are not fat. Um, but you're tall. You can, put it, you can eat a lot. Yeah, I can still put on 20 pounds. Nobody would notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm good. Um, but yeah, so, so like. So what, how hard was it to come up with the recipe? It, it, here's where it comes back to, like, I feel like with Kelly, like our past kind of just meant to be together on this. She's been doing bakery forever. I mean, if you follow her stuff on Instagram, you know, it's, it's sweet love bakes. Um, you'll see, I mean, her attention to detail, she can do scratch made biscuits, donuts, all that, but some of the most beautiful wedding cakes you've ever seen. She's, she even did my wedding cake. I mean, but even theme cakes, she has one on there. That's like a Yeti cooler. She's done like cars. She did a unicorn, like just cool stuff. But, she has she's just very ocd with what she is trying to put out and so it's perfection she's practicing all the time the barbecue one thing i think is cool about a barbecue is it's a real wood fired pit like we're not using gas we're not supplementing it's all wood fired and so you know there's talent to do that there's a lot of it oh my god i thought barbecue was going to be easy and i was so nervous we did a photo shoot yesterday and like a sneak peek for some people and it was my first time putting my barbecue in front of critics, and I'm I'm happy they said they liked it. We'll see uh, if the rest of the city does. But um, I've paid a lot of attention. I've tried a lot of barbecue. It's not just I've been doing it in my backyard and just here you go, or I saw it on TV once and thought it'd be cool. Well, you were a judge at a barbecue contest. Yeah, and I've, you? I've done competition barbecue as well and all that, but um, it's a passion. And so when you look at cooking fine dining, you're cooking one dish at a time and you're making it beautiful and you're in that moment. But when you're cooking like batch cooking and large stuff, it's like you're cooking family meal all the time. And so where Kelly and I, this restaurant, the recipes, they're just kind of organically coming together. We're, we're, and we're taking, we've got a, um, some good friends that are giving us some really great Arkansas heritage recipes. And so we're going to be bringing some really great stuff back from the day. Um, but we really, with this concept, we want to pay homage to the South and we want to have some place that 
two-year-old kids all the way up to 95-year-old grandparents will have a great time at it. It's for the family, and you can have a cold beer, too. So, Well, every guy likes that. <laughs> Everybody likes that. And a glass of champagne. They'll be bubbly. <laughs> but we'll have some good brunch cocktails. and, and uh, Yeah, we're very excited about it. I love your concept. If, um, if you could give advice to yourself... What advice would you tell yourself of 20 years ago? Oh, that's a tough one. No, it's a good one. <laughs> Invest in Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah that's, I was going to say. <laughs> I that been, was good, Dan. Or even Apple, I mean, back in the day. Um, I, I would have, I would have, when I was younger, I would have taken more t I wish I could have told myself to stop and listen to my elders a little bit more. And rather than thinking their advice was silly and stupid, um, and, and, and putting it to the side, I, I wish there's quite a few people that have been in my life that I wish I would have just taken that extra time to, to, to get in their head a little bit more and find out what's in there because there's some people, um, I'll just, uh, Bob Coleman was a very good friend of mine. Um, love him to death. He's, you know, Coleman dairy, but right now I'm doing this barbecue restaurant and I just want to call Bob so many times and talk ribs. And Has he passed away or something? He passed away about three years ago now. I think it's, uh, it, it may have been less than that, maybe two, three years ago. He's Coleman Dairy, Coleman Milk, Bob Coleman. Um, but he made the best ribs. He'd always have the tailgate at War Memorial. And his ribs are amazing and better than anywhere I've ever had. And, of course, like this is the restaurant. All the Colemans are going to come. They're going to love it. But the one guy, Bob Sr., like I just want to talk to him about the ribs. I wish I would have taken that time then, even that one small moment. But even... You know, there's grandparents, there's seniors, just people around you. Just experience the people around you more. I guess that would be my advice when you're young. Learn to listen. Learn to listen. Shut up and listen more. You know, you <laughs> uh, you obviously, to, or at least it seems like it to me, have got a star following you around. Your life is very serendipitous. I mean, you close one restaurant, another opportunity opens. You run it. You said it was meant to be that you and Kelly would run into each other and open this restaurant together. You do seem to be kind of operating under a special star. Why do you think that is? Um, yeah, that, that, is, that it is just a good one. I'm is just, it just hard work? It, I think it's, it, it is hard work, but it's, um, you know, some is luck, but, you know, surround yourself with good people. And, you know, be careful with what you say to people. Uh, make sure that the friends you hold close to you um, are good. And even though you might have really close friends around you, try to see through the bullshit. Because sometimes they're not the ones that you need to be surrounded by. And the older I've gotten, it, it's great because I, recently I had one that um, I was so involved and, and, and really cared for. But now it's like the warning signs. I can see it now. And I don't want to be guarded, but... Um, you know, I, I think that the reason for my success right now is I've just got a really great support system around me and I'm able to, to kind of see when things aren't aren't right. And like it goes with building a good family, um, a, a good family around you. And if it's not your mom and dad or your brothers or you're an only child or all that, it has to be your friends. You have to have something you call family around you that you can lean on a, 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 a bouncing room that you can close the door. And nobody's going to judge you. And if they do, they laugh at the end. You know, um, I think that's what what's what's been a big part one word to sum you up <laughs> <laughs> i'm giving him all the hard questions yeah, that's, today that's a good one um, one word to sum you up i know complicated <laughs> oh that is so good and that is so right that is perfect and what do you want your legacy in arkansas to be fried chicken just good food and laughter How, where do i buy your spice so um, you can get our spices right now online for no seasonings.com, but you can also get it at Eggshells Kitchen Company, which Eggshells is great. Is that up on Kavanaugh? It's up on Kavanaugh. They have some great cooking classes there. Um, so just check that place out. Uh, Eggshells Kitchen Company is great. But then also Edwards Food Giant on Cantrell sells it as well. Really? And, oh, yeah, and it's great there. Um, they have a wonderful meat meat department there. If, they have a great meat department. If really anybody's do. listening, they've got one of the best meat departments. They, they make their sausage from scratch. I mean, there's a guy that's in there every, I think it's, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, making scratch, scratch made Edwards, sausage. Uh, what's it called? Edwards Food Giant? Ed Edwards Food Giant Cantrell, on Cantrell. Mississippi. It's and if you're doing barbecue or cooking for the masses or, or testing some stuff out, they've just got a great selection of meats. 
Oh yeah, and I mean it's it's old school butcher. It's like an old school grocery store butcher. butcher it really shop. is. Mm-hmm. It really, really is. So Donnie, you get a gift from me. I couldn't decide what to give you—a cookbook <laughs> or a wine holder. So I decided to give you from Arkansas Flag and Banner a patriotic salt and pepper shaker. I love it. This is great. No, I love salt and pepper shakers, Aren't and they I, fun? I they are, and you can't have enough of Not them. Not that you really want to use those because they're so cute. I collect them. I have a couple. I have a few. I have some blue suede shoes. I've got some cool stuff. I've got some good salt and pepper shakers. So so if you've got a great entrepreneurial story that you would like to share, I would love to hear from you. Send your bio or your contact information to questions at upyourbusiness.org. And someone will be in touch. And finally, to our listeners, thank you for spending time with me and Donnie for no. If you think this program has been for, about you, you're right. But it's also been for me. Thank you for letting me fulfill my destiny. My hope today is that you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening. And that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of flagandbanner.com. If you miss any part of the show or want to learn more about UIYB, go to flagandbanner.com and click on Radio Show. Like us on Facebook or subscribe to her weekly podcast wherever you like to listen. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week with links to resources you heard discussed on today's show. Underwriting opportunities available upon request. Carrie's goal is to help you live the American dream.